Greetings, brothers and sisters. See Candle here. In today's short video, I'd like to make you all aware of a very important topic which personally I believe is not touched on enough. Before we move forward, let me ask you a few questions. Are you aware that your thoughts and your emotions dictate the changes of energy within and around you? And that this often shifts and changes the frequency at which you vibrate. And that this change in frequency and energy is also echoed throughout your life. Look at it from a magical perspective. When one is performing a spell, a ritual, or any sort of magical operation to affect someone or something, we are aware it requires the intention, the will, and the energy of the individual. However, some of the most powerful rituals involve the full immersion of one's own mind and emotions into the operation at hand. This form of magic normally has tremendous and sometimes startling results. So, now let's remove the actual ritual or spell for a moment. What is going on spiritually and energetically with our thoughts and emotions that amplify magic or cause any change in our reality? Well, we can look at it from a hermetic perspective. For example, the tome, known as Kaibalian, discusses the seven hermetic principles and touches on this fact. Let's look at the all is mind principle. The principle of mentalism states that existence is akin to a mental projection, wherein our thoughts can shape your reality. We can even look at the principle of correspondence and understand our connectedness and understand that we are a fractal piece of reality. The infinite fractals are mirroring each other and that when we change one fractal, indeed this has a domino effect on all the other fractal pieces and all the other shards of existence. Meaning if you cause an alteration within yourself, you cause an alteration in the rest of reality. It has a domino effect. We can even look at the principle of vibration in Hermetics. For it states that everything is constantly vibrating, everything is constantly moving. If you were to have a negative thought and a negative emotion, your vibration and energy would shift and align to those thoughts, align to those emotions, making your vibrations negative. And the same can be said of your energy. I could go on and on about the principles, but you can search into that when you have the time. Let's move on. We understand that your mere thoughts dictate your energy, your vibration, which in turn affects your reality. See, I have witnessed countless new beginning magicians. They do ritual work and spell work and then complain about their failings. These individuals normally have passing thoughts of doubt or negative mental chatter, so to speak. Or sometimes they can just have overall bad opinions of themselves. This in turn affects their emotions, affects their thoughts and brings them into an emotional low for a lack of better terminology. Look, you have to understand, you're doing magic every single day without lighting any damn candle, without using any damn sigil, without entering any circle, temple or ritual area. Merely your thoughts aligned with your emotions can cause things to happen. This isn't the case 24-7, of course. However, it is the majority of the time. Once this realization is obtained to the fullest degree, you'll come to realize how much you actually sabotage yourself on a daily using what we could refer to as unconscious magic, if you will. Let's look at it like this. Statements that you say to yourself, either out loud or internally, like I'm depressed, I'm alone, I'm broke. These are confirming to you and every cell in your body, your energy, your vibrations, programming your energy and your reality with these statements to be encoded throughout your entire life experience. Even if you have optimistic thoughts, but they can be some kinds desperate, right? Such as, I want a job, I hope I get a girlfriend, or I hope I get a boyfriend. Hope or want isn't going to actually change anything. You're once again projecting into reality your current desperate circumstances, and probably are reinforcing it due to that desperation, that negative correlation, that negative thought, or that negative emotion. Your thoughts, emotions, energy, vibration, all of it then is creating a cycle of self-sabotage, which most people are actually unaware of. They do some spell or some ritual hoping to resolve the situation, 
and that's fine, that's actually great. However, after that is concluded, many of them afterwards still project the same negative thoughts, emotions and energy into their world, literally diluting the magic at hand, so to speak. And in many cases, especially with overthinkers or people who are overly emotionally negative, shall we say, you will actually start to create thought forms, literally living extensions of your negative thoughts and emotions and energy, which act of their own accord, which in turn, in turn ensure the cycle continues and that they're being fed with that negative energy. They will get stronger. And when the negativity spreads, it will affect us more and more. And that in turn feeds the thought forms more and more. And that will lead to them becoming more powerful, stronger, and they'll have greater influence over you and your life. And people still wonder why meditation is important. Why mastering yourself before mastering reality is important. Why aligning and controlling your mind and emotions are important. And this is why. Do not be a victim to your own thoughts or your own emotions. Learn to master and dominate them. Then and only then should you look outwards to master and dominate your reality. Then and only then should you do the ritual and the spell. Once this is done, you'll learn then how to apply your emotional and your mental energy in ritual. And even after the ritual, for maximum efficiency in your magic and to maximize overall results. It's also good to note that there are many in your life which may be like this, who may be affecting you. This is why so many people on the path of magic, on the path of ascent, or the path of becoming, tend to cut off so many toxic and negative people in their lives. And sometimes we are looked at as heartless for doing so. But we're not. Because their negativity can sometimes be so intoxicating that it starts to affect our heart centers, our psyches, and will end up re-immersing ourselves back into that hopeless cycle. So please, brothers and sisters, please be aware of this. Master this realization within you each and every single day before lighting your damn candles or your incense or calling your spirits for what is within us, within our hearts, our minds, will be projected into our life experience. So only project that which benefits, empowers, liberates, or makes you happy. The ritual, the spell, and the magical operation is great and all. But if you don't have a general understanding over these basics, then I suggest actually putting the ritual tools away and turn inwards for now, in order to soar upwards and outwards into that which you wish to create and that which you wish to become.